So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to draw some really basic houses in two point perspective. We're going to begin with a horizon line and let's do a her high horizon line like we're looking down at the houses. So this is going to focus more on the rooftops. And next, we need to go ahead and fill in or draw our perspective grid. Alright, so we have our grid all finished. I want to begin, I'm going to do smaller houses in this video. I did larger ones and since we're looking down at them, What I recommend you do if you're not used to perspective grids, and I will demonstrate it with my second house, as I, and I sort of forgot myself, but first we start with rectangles. Like regardless, we're gonna start with a rectangle. So I want to draw a house. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda start by sketching in what I want. I'm not really concerned about lining it up on the grid just yet. This is like a prefab neighborhood. So I start by just kind of loosely sketching in what I want. Just so that I have an idea. Now these houses are awfully close to each other. It's more like a military barracks than it is like a neighborhood. But you can see that even just for sketching, oops, sorry about that, even just for sketching, having the grid down makes kind of more accurate doodling possible. And there's all sorts of pre-made grid resources online. There's even brushes for Photoshop where you can just plunk a grid down in your image, which makes it a lot easier to quickly sketch an environment. And in our next video, I'm gonna show you how to use two-point perspective to draw an interior. And of course, even though we're using linear perspective for this, you also want to remember to use the principles of atmospheric perspective, size, scale, overlap, color, level of detail, that sort of thing. And these are just really unrealistic cardboard looking houses because we don't really have any detail and these would be great if we were looking at something really far away and zoomed out. Let's say I want to do a chimney.
And if you want to get better, ooh, I need to practice more. In fact, it's where I was about to go with that. If you want to get better at utilizing perspective in your own drawings, practice is really the best way to do it. Even the shingles are going to head off towards a vanishing point, and that's what makes having a perspective grid really handy is you can just kind of quickly jot them in. Now let's say we want to put a back door on this house. Maybe little window here. Well, it's a poorly drawn little window, but it's still just a little window. Even things like your window panes should head towards one of your two vanishing points. So we have one of our houses down. I will do another one on camera and then I'll work on the rest and check in with you guys. Oh, I want to also point out this line here is our horizon line. So we have a high vantage point and we're looking down at these houses. Maybe we're in like a four or five story building looking down at the neighborhood that kind of surrounds that building. like a lineup of sheds. See, scale can play a really Okay, so we've got a couple more houses sketched into our landscape. I'm gonna sketch in two more and then we're gonna start adding landscaping in our environmental aspects. I am going to emphasize the horizon line even if we end up drawing over it. Now you definitely want to fill this environment. You want more than just six houses otherwise you're going to want to crop your frame in because it's going to look kind of empty. Adding things like cars, adding things like other houses, adding things like trees and woods and hills, all of that makes it feel like a world that's fleshed out and lived in. And this is not an environmental design tutorial. This is just to demonstrate two-point perspective, show how it can be used to draw like the exteriors of environments, that sort of thing. But if you're fleshing this out into an illustration or into a comic page, that's definitely something you're going to want to think about. And I know a lot of comic artists, especially in web comics, tend to avoid environments because they can seem kind of overwhelming. They can seem kind of daunting. First off, you really only need to worry about showing your main environment once per page or even once per scene. Give your viewers a good overview of what's going on. They understand the environment. You don't have to worry about it much after that. You can, if you're doing a webcomic, you can also reuse assets that you've already created. You can also go out and take photos and work from those, even tracing them. They're, if they're your photos, you have the right to do that, and a lot of mangaka do that. Or you can use uh, programs like Clip Studio Paint and SketchUp to create your environments and then just ink them in your comic.
I mean, having these sort of skills, they're great, but if they're not serving you and the kind of work you do, then they're not really serving any purpose at all. So I'm just showing you guys this as another possible tool in your toolbox. And I have to admit, if SCAD didn't force me to learn multi, force me to learn linear perspective, then I would just be doing everything in one point. And I still do a lot of things in one point because one point is very easy and very quick. And if one point works for you, that's great. If atmospheric works for you, that's great. All right, so let's add some additional elements. This is a little bit small to be a road. There's no room for lawn or for sidewalk. Maybe this is in a city. It would be kind of a narrow one-way road. And then we can add in some landscaping. So I'm starting out by just sketching circles, sketching spheres. These are going to be bushes. and trees. And remember, overlap is one of the principles of atmospheric perspective as is scale. So our houses are getting smaller as they go towards our vanishing points and our horizon lines. Well, singular. Horizon line singular. Breaking the horizon line with trees or with mountains will also help kind of um, give this a sense of real space. So maybe along the vanishing point. I'll sketch in some foothills or along the horizon line. And then we'll sketch in some clouds. Now this would be the underside of the cloud because even clouds adhere to perspective, although you don't want them all going to the two vanishing points. You definitely want to mix things up a little bit. We'll have some overlap by having a big cloud behind one of our little mountains. Okay, so what about scale? We need some more scale, right? Maybe we have some more trees going off into the distance. I'm just drawing little lollipop trees to help kind of get my point across. Now I'm just adding a little bit of detail. The trees closest to us would have more detail than those in the distance. And if we drew even more houses, it would get to the point where all you're seeing is a roof and the body, no doors, no windows. So I'm going to work on kind of fleshing this out and I'll check back in with you guys. All 
right guys so I think this demonstration is just about done I hope it was useful helpful and informative for you guys please keep a lookout for my next two-point demonstration where we are going to talk about creating an interior using two-point perspective thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys have a great day bye guys <laughs>